$2.2 million, 14 of the world's greatest players, two global qualifiers with a chance of a lifetime. It's Premier League Poker here in Vienna. This is Party Poker's Premier League Poker 5. This season we have 16 players taking to the felt. They've been divided into two groups and they will all battle it out in a league format in a bid to accumulate points to get them onto the final table. Both groups will play four matches each where they will accumulate points. The winner of each match will receive 16 points, the runner-up will get 11, then it's 8, 6, 4, 3, 2 and 0 points for coming last. After all matches have played out, the top three players in each group will go through to the final table. Those in fourth and fifth place in both groups will play heads up to determine who takes the last two spots at the final. The players in sixth, seventh and eighth positions will be knocked out. Last time Group A played their first league match, this is how the action shaped up. Group A arrived at the casino in high spirits, all determined to win maximum points in the first league match. The first to fall was last year's <laughs> runner-up, Luke Full Flush Schwartz. For being knocked out in last place, he left with zero points. Schwartz was oh. followed out the door by eight-time WSOP bracelet winner Eric Seidel. All right, good luck, huh? Eugene Kachaloff was knocked out in sixth place by the Premier League mixed game champion Andy Frankenberger. <laughs> Tony G went from chip leader to the rail in 10 hands. He called well, Franklin's very, all in. That's pretty And weird. the internet qualifier hit trips on the river. How easy is that? Well done. That's the way to do it. Sam Trickett took fourth place. He pushed all, right. all in with ace five, and Matthew right, Franklin right. went on to knock out his third victim. Good game, Sam. Good luck. The global qualifier's luck soon ran out, however. He called Phil Locks all in, and the World Open 5 champion hit a pair of jacks. Matthew Franklin took home eight points for his third place finish. We were heads up between Phil Lock and Andy Frankenberger. Lock repeated his last season's early success and won the match with a pair of kings to take maximum points. That was uh, a sick ride. Wow, I never expected to win it. That was sick. It's time to get the first heat for the second group underway, so let me introduce you to the table. In seat number one with over $8 million in live tournament caches, Elky's also a former WPT Player of the Year and a World Series of Poker bracelet winner. In seat number two is Yevgeny Timoshenko. At just 21, Yevgeny won both the World Cup of Online Poker and the WPT Championship, and he's widely regarded as one of the best tournament players in the world. In seat number three is Ben at Never Scared Beat Wilanowski. He won his seat here through the global qualifiers, but given his online results, it's no surprise to see him in this lineup. In seat number four is the missing Tom Durdwan. I think he may have been held up at some poker game or other, but I'm sure he'll be joining us just as soon as he can. In seat number five is Vanessa Selp. She won the 2010 Partouche Poker Tour main event. She also performed the incredible feat of winning back-to-back -back NAPT Mohegan Sun main event titles. In seat number six is one of the most famous players in the game. He always draws a crowd when he's playing the biggest games in the world, both live and online. It's Patrick Antonius. In seat number seven is Daniel Jungleman Cates, an online poker superstar who also crushes at the highest games online. And in seat number eight, it's Scott Seaver. He won the season nine WPT World Championship. He also has a bracelet himself, and he's a very likable guy. He wanted me to add that. And getting the game started, let's go over to your hosts, Jesse May and Phil Locke. Group B kicks off today. What a great Premier League it's been so far, and I'm here with a man who's all smiles because he's the current Group A leader, Phil Locke. Now, Phil, you've had so much success in the Premier League. In the Premier League Poker 4, you were the league standings winner. Um, there's a lot of newbies here in Group B. Guys, they're great players. They've never played the Premier League before. What 
might they do? What might they not know about the Premier League format? I don't know. It's, I think the key thing to remember is if you're focused on accumulating points more than winning your heat, you're almost better off in some ways because the points are so huge and getting to the final table is so massive that just focusing on first through third, I think, is the way to handle these things. Not like, I got to win, whatever. It's nice to win, but you can't win until you get in the final three anyways. Now, of all the big names, perhaps Tom Dwan, the biggest name in Group B, but he's had some travel issues. In fact, in fact right now, as we speak, he's, he's speeding in a plane uh, across <laughs> Hong Kong. Uh, I, the guy's nuts. I mean, it's the classic gambler p paradigm. You're leaving one game that's too good to go to another game that might be good. You're like, where's the at? What's going on? But this is a little different because he actually pre-shipped the 125K. And he's still like, you know, it's, yeah, like, and it's until, a little different. Until his plane lands, until he gets here, he'll be getting blinded <laughs> off. So we'll see how that affects things. Yeah, yep, yeah, that's crazy. They are all great players, and we'll see who takes the lead when Group B kicks off. I want a three bet, but I feel a four bet coming from Tom. I heard I'm not supposed to be friends the table. The whole time they were calling you incompetent. I thought they were calling you incompetent. He doesn't know his own strength. You gotta stand up for yourself, you know, in this world. That's the way to do it. The character, the banter, the action of Group A has now given way to a whole new kind of fun. Eight players in Group B sitting down and Phil Lott. This is a different sort of group, Group B. I call this this kind of sick. A lot of the sickest players in poker, perhaps, might be around this table. Right, I think uh, I have to agree with you. Very slidey table. All the players really have their own story, their own own claims to fame. I mean, you look at Elke there. You know, Elke's not just the coolest guy in France. I mean, he, he is the coolest poker player in the world. And uh, his results in every format, just uh, so incredible. Yep. The raise by Daniel Cates, Jungle Man, and the cold call behind uh, from Scott Seaver. You were also of the mind that it's it's okay to play very uh, sort of look at flops early on, not to get too many chips in. Phil. Yeah, I, no problem, no problem with this play at all. Like he can fold or call, whatever. I mean, when the stacks are this deep, you really don't have to do anything. It's not until around 63 hands where it starts getting. So this is a standard flat now. If jungle pounds one more time or a heart comes, yeah, it's checking. Jungle thinks, he's, thinks he's got a six, a six or something, whatever. He just knows he's not winning, you know? He's giving up. Jungle Man's a really interesting guy because obviously his story is, is, is so unique. Uh, really the biggest winner as far as heads up, no limit hold'em goes in the history of the internet. And uh, yeah, it's... All over, kids. All but his, over. his tournament record's unknown. His, uh, yeah, he hasn't played. He's, he just turned 21, like, what, this year or something? He's really Very young. recently, yeah. Does that mean you, like, try to bluff me? You're not going to earn many friends at the table this way. I heard I'm not supposed to make friends at the table. I don't know. Depends what your priorities are. Do you really care that much about money? I like to think people are a little more important than that. Scott Seaver getting busy uh, needling Jungleman yeah, straight he, away. But he does it in such a fun, in, like he's an intellectual purist, so it's never really needling. It's just like poking around it. Tell me what you know about Scott Seaver, Phil. I know that I played with him at the, uh, at a, on a televised cash game in the States, and I realized after about seven hands I that I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with the fact that I knew he was stealing more than his share. This right here, this gentleman, Yevgeny Timoshenko, my favorite, not only for uh, fashion, fashion. <laughs> he's a sharp, he always makes sure that he's got a fashion sharp thing going on, you know? We've both known him a couple years, Phil. Yeah. This is the first time seeing him now, uh, where if I were a bartender, I would not card him, you know? He's had to. Right. Well, it's good for you, bad for me, Look at this, hand versus hand. It's definitely a C bet, and it's definitely a call or a raise. And see, this is where early on, I don't mind just calling here, because if you raise, what? You're getting called by monster draws and sets and two, I don't know. 
Just on the even even to the lead, really, here, you're saying? Yeah. I, I would just check call. I don't know, because it's so early, the stacks are so big. Now, if he checks, I would I would bet. I was brought up better than that. No, maybe not. Maybe check and then get value on the river if it's a quick. I don't know. Patrick Antonius, the man I made my, one of my biggest bluffs lifetime against. At the time, I had never bluffed anyone 85,000 on the river. And I tried it against Patrick, and it didn't work out. It was an ace jack high, wasn't it? Phil? Yeah. High stakes. But I mean, poker. I knew I was beat on the flop and turn. I was. And uh, he managed to call you with, was it third pair, fourth pair? 19th pair. There were, eight, <laughs> 19th pair. There were 18 over cards on that hand. <laughs> and uh, he is, he's, a, he's amazing. I mean, uh, for a long time, really, they said second best player in the world for sure, right? You know, behind Phil yep. Ivey only. Now, now what's going to happen is we're going to get a check here, and he's going to hope his hand is good. Hope, like, maybe ace-10 of diamonds. Or, sorry, ace-10 of hearts, or I don't know. Those are the kind well, of, been... of guys we, we've got, the kind of lineup. We, Antonius and Timoshenko staring him down. I, I think if you value betting here or checking is fine. I, I'm good either way. It's just so painful when you bet and get raised. It's a, he knows he's winning if he bets and gets called. Yeah, that's fine play. And that's definitely the kind of play that has sort of this overall big picture view of what it means. Let me hang out and get wait till it's four handed, three handed before anything sick really happens. Getting points is so big. I'm sure you guys were chopping. Yeah, getting points, not dying. There's okay. the empty oh, seat for Tom Dwan again. Now, there's a little donkey that's symbolic of a guy that can. Anyone who's going to put up 125,000 and then just kind of not show up gets to have a donkey sit in his seat until he shows up. Yeah, he, uh, the tournament organizer. Do you guys understand how much money that is? A house, <laughs> a house in some parts of the world, 125,000, life-changing money, and he just, he didn't even, he was at the airport, and he called the production guy, and he's like, hey, I'm at the airport, what's the, where's the, what flight, what, he didn't even when know. When am I playing, I when think When am I playing, said, yeah, and um, Beijing and said in three <laughs> hours, you know? <laughs> didn't know what day he was playing. It's he had, uh, uh, but you know, these days, Tom Dwan, he's part of that. Yeah, he's playing million dollar pots with crazy nutballs on the other side of the world, like, this is peanuts, you know? And uh, I guess he'd come off a long step, but he is on his way here. He's, he's 35,000 feet as we speak. We've had it open from Cates, a three bet on the button from Seaver, and now Yevgeny Timoshenko with the jacks and the big blind has to decide uh, a big decision. How light is Seaver? How light is Cates? By the way, you're, people will think I'm sick because I would raise with a 5 8 of diamonds where Seaver is, but I might fold jacks here because it has gone raise, re raise. Now, Okay, guy has ace king, your race is when he has nines, he's going to fold if you make a big bet anyways. If he has kings and aces, I, I play too tight. But what, what Timoshenko has decided to do here, I think, is the cold four yes. bet. And that's a cold four bet with and an intention an, to pass, right? By the way, 100%. It's an easy, I actually like the call. He's got 300,000. It's only 20,000 or whatever to call. The problem is sometimes he's going to have to fold the best hand. I wanted him to tank two minutes longer there. I was about to say, But I, I was, I was, I was thinking about what you it. said. I was about to call the clock. Fell out of my element putting that in so quickly. You, you've never <laughs> seen Ray's been three about before with a new spot for you? You didn't know what to do? <laughs> By the way, Phil, there is a thing, and Seaver started early. Um, it started yeah. Premier League, uh, the Mixed Game Championships. Uh, they like to tease Timoshenko for how long he takes on every decision. Oh, I didn't notice. Timoshenko raised. He, re he Yeah, he four bet it. He four bet it. Oh, I wouldn't have done that. But you see, he's better than me, and he had the best hand, and he knocked out all those overcards. What, a king and an ace were out there, so he was 50-50. And Selbst has opened again, <laughs> but Timoshenko this time decides to just flat with the tens, as did Jungleman behind. They're, they're the action yeah. right now, it seems like, <laughs> Selbst and Jungleman, uh, and Seaver perhaps. Oh, I see what you're saying. Earlier, yeah, he raised to fold, like, had somebody yeah. re-raised him, he would have folded the jacks. I, th I of think course. so, don't of you? Of course, trivial. Yeah. Wow. We have, we have a straight versus a... In it's Omaha, this is a more common play to have like a hand like tens there and realize no one probably has a straight because you have blockers. And here, he's got a royal flush draw, does Tim yeah, O'Shea. Go second nut draw. 11. And Selbs, now, now how should Jungleman play this? I think he should bet and expect and try and get it all in. Seven Maybe call. not. No, bet and 
I think I would bet get it all in. Well, Vanessa bet. He called. And it's on Timoshenko. Even though your opponent can just have flop like a six high flush. I, sometimes you have to pay people off. Flopping, you know, people are more likely to have. I just have this feeling that Jungle Man. Uh, oh, wow. And Timoshenko folded there. You like it? That's okay. Yes. And Vanessa going for the second barrel here. Um, this could get this ugly. This is because, you know, she's, she's pictured in her mind jungles, Jungle Man's hands. And, you know, Ace-10 is in there without a spade. King-8. I don't know what I'm talking about. This is... I, I just had this feeling early on, Phil, that Jungle Man was liable to get involved in some big pots and maybe even go out first. Holy cow. But, uh, oh, wow, is so right. So now she's going to go for value for sure because she's thinking if you ever had a flush, I would have heard about it. This is going to hurt. And this is always getting called? Oh, yeah. Six. I think 85, 90%. He played, he underrupted his hand. It always appeared that he had a pair and a flush draw. Seven, yeah. seven calls. Yeah. That hurts. Yep. Great stuff for Jungle Man, who's won the first really big pot of the night. She basically hit a one-outer to destroy herself. If a spade had come, she probably would have checked folding. And for Jungle Man Cates, <sighs> you know, he was the guy everybody said. He's never played tournaments before. He's in trouble. He's not. He's, he's leading. He's leading. Uh, you know, anybody like Jungle Man who's a wizard at a couple Five variants points. of poker. Might as well be a wizard at other ones. It doesn't matter if he's never played an eight-handed, uh, that blinds go up every 21 hit. You know, you see three million hands online, you can adjust to the format in what, about a minute of conversation or? Yeah. And, and he's a wizard, so. The, the Obviously, the, the further story about Jungle Man, you know, people have heard about the Durr Challenge. Um, where Durr challenged anyone in the world yep. to play I, him, heads up, and yep. Jungle Man took him on. And uh, the match hasn't still yet to be finished, but Jungle Man was beating Durr really badly, really badly. Oh my lord, I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't even know that. Did the one between Durr and Patrick Antonius finish where they were gonna play many hands? Uh, well, it finished farther along than the, than the oh. Jungle Man one did. Huh. I think they got most of the way through. Wow. There wasn't, I think Durr actually uh, ended up a little bit ahead. Check. Check. I wonder what the, the tattoo means on Wolofsky's uh, hand. There's something written in. Check. Do you know anything about that tattoo? I, it, mu it must be a hockey tattoo, Phil. No, it looked like it was like hiragana or something. Japanese. Or it was, it was, 5, I don't know. Wilanowski's hit his set on the turn from the small wow. blind, and now Seavers come out betting. It looks like kind of an innocuous card. Okay, if he elects to raise, see you raise. I would raise that too. You don't know your opponent has air. And by the way, if he flatted the ace nine, Seaver probably wouldn't. He's, he's a favorite not to poke at it again. Scott's let it go, and Wilanowski, who was so impressive in the global qualifiers, to some uh, at this table, he's a great unknown. To others, uh, he's well known as one of the most feared names on the internet. Here's the leaderboard, 359,000 for Timoshenko. Selps, though, does she have to change tactics early on? Uh, no, the stacks are still pretty deep. Later, later things will get a little hairy. It's just careful plotting through the first 40 or so hands. Group B's second league match continues after the break. Welcome back to season five of Premier League Poker from the Austrian city Vienna. This season, our 16 players have been divided into two groups of eight. Tonight, it's Group B's turn at the felt. Let's get back to the action. Timoshenko there, he was in some ways the bubble uh, in the last Premier League poker. The last heat, uh, he made a very questionable move. and Oh, right, against David Benjamin, right? Benjamin and uh, the, the, the qualifier, uh, Giovanni Safina. And I kind of feel like Timoshenko is one of those guys who, uh, 
you know, he reviews. <laughs> he reviews his sessions. <laughs> yep. So Seaver has the pocket fives. Pocket sevens. Okay. And as Jungleman just flatted there with the ace king from the big blind? I don't mind this play. I've done it a few times myself. It's it's balanced. He thinks he's winning though some of the time with the, this is the I had to fold some ace kings. It's tough when you play it like this, but when you hit big, you can just really do some damage. Yeah, it really. I mean, we're going to see so many interesting hands. You know, players playing hands deceptively, and Antonius making a fold there with the best hand, Jungleman. Wow, they really just gave it up some, for Seaver. Some of the things that people don't see, like, okay, so ace king. You can take particularly weird lines later in the hand. You can actually turn a hand where you should have raised preflop into a bluff. You know, Phil, you, you're one of the most emotional guys on the table. You kind of let it all hang out. Here we have, there's got to be four of the, the most emotionless players in all of poker. Um, you know, between like... Yeah, when they play, they are, stay, they stay continuously in the zone. I can be in and out of hands, like... And sometimes during a hand, I slip raise. and talk too much. But to raise uh, I definitely have more fun talking. Antonius, for instance, I mean, he's he's, he's like very a, stoic. Yeah, yeah. It's like an ice man. Seaver's our best luck for if we can get some talking chips for Seaver. <laughs> he just needs to win a big pot. Seven, he's so sharp. You know. Sixteen. And I I know because you were there. If we think about the opening Wait, match. Yeah, Tony has just uh, owned a soul there. He had nine sixes page, which, by the way, again, is a hand. Um, not the best hand, but it's a playable hand. And he just uh, he just re-raised, figuring out uh, that it's really hard. When you know people are going to re-raise their sharp, you just kind of, to defend against that is to play tight. Uh, it hurts to play tight, though, but. Wilanowski has been much, much less active than he was at all stages of the qualifiers. And you like to see that because the format is so different. The qualifier was so winner take all. And right now, obviously, it, it's so standing. So maybe the guy has more than one gear. Yeah, for sure. All the, yeah, he has many hockey sticks in his collection. This is where I think a lot of these guys will keep their pot small. King, queen, five, five. One check. Today, bet 4,000. Now, is it weak for Elkie just to have checked and folded here? No, that's what he done. No, he has a lot of chips, you know. He's getting that C-bet if he hits a fiver on some other flops. And no, that's just the standard. Seaver, Scott Seaver, a lot of, uh, he's he's from that, you call him super sharp. He's sort of from that stable, uh, I say stable, came up with guys, uh, went yes. to college with guys like Isaac Haxton. Right. And, yeah, there's and a whole army of Co the college kids that should have been engineers and doctors, they were like, what's online <laughs> poker? And two weeks later, they were getting straight Fs, and their parents were wondering, what happened to my son or daughter, you know? I mean, you know, they talk about the big brain drain in America. Oh, Here's know, part of the brain drain. They're going to <laughs> yeah. Vienna, Austria, with money that they won from... Yeah, the, the science race that, yep. you know, now uh, some of the developing nations, uh, you know, have, have all the super sharp guys. And this is, this is what's happened to the American clever guys from, from Brown. They should have been doctors, and now they're playing poker. The good thing about most poker players is if they're really <laughs> sharp and they get a lot of money, they almost all invariably find good things to do with their life and, and the world and charities and stuff like that. They're a great, smart group of people that know it's not all about, you know. A couple of interesting inflections on this flop. Yeah. Antonius raised, and you had the, the nines and the tens in the big blind. They both just flatted. And I like this flat. Uh, from all players. If I had a pair, I would flat. If I had an ace, I would flat. That ace now makes tens and nines feel like they might be winning. It also makes Antonius's check look 
genius like, doesn't it? Yep. That's why. That's why Is that why he's a genius? Well, that's why he's going to win more money on this pot. It's going to go. My guess is it's going to go bet, call, bold. Oh, is it Wilanowski? Wilanowski's got the He tens. might call. He's going to probably, it's going to come call, call, if I had to guess. Now, this might seem Great sick, call. but if somebody wanted to raise there with tens, I wouldn't fault them for it, because if you get called, you're normally only getting called by a hand that's beating you anyways, and you then you staff, stave off the pain of paying them on the river, and you get clean information. To now, why has Patrick Antonius just called rather than raises? Is it because two face up if he raises? Because there's uh, straights on the board where no one, where somebody would flat, and there are better aces, and there's full houses, and it went bet call. When you over call, you have to have. Uh, now nines doesn't think he's winning. Tens thinks I might be winning, but I'm probably losing to Antonius's flush draw, like king five of clubs or something. Great check. Okay. And he's just gonna say okay. Yeah, he wins. A funny okay. little pot, 51,000 though. They'll want all the information. Show them round the table, nines, tens. There's the goods. Yep. And he got the max. I mean, he really did. If he bets the flop, he gets called in one spot. The next guy folds. And if you bet there and some guy raises, you just feel the pain. Antonius is there. I guess one of the things that people always like to find out, you know, it's, it's such an overused term. He's a great player. He's a world-class player. But what separates when you have all those guys like we have here? You know, if, is and what's going to, is Antonius, if he's head and shoulders above the rest of them, where, uh, actually, when are we going to find out? Actually, I, I don't think he's head and shoulders above the rest of them. I believe if anyone is better than anyone at this table, that it's not tremendously more than the next guy. Because remember, this isn't half a million dollar, uh, you know, 200, 400 deep stack poker. This is somewhat deepish at the beginning, but ultimately it's a sit and go with, you know, these guys play for more. I don't know. I don't. I don't. You, you think he's he, good, but they're all good. I mean, that I like I. You feel like it could look. Be I came. I came here. out saying Vanessa was going to win because she came off the booth flow. If you come off the booth, you're in the zone. You know, like that's two percent right there, maybe. Uh, I don't know, but I really think they all understand this format pretty solid. I don't. And yet you've played four, prem, five Premier League heats in your in your life, and you've won four of them, Phil. Yeah, well, that accidents happen. Give me four thousand from his stack. Come on. <laughs> no, believe me, if he calls, he wins this hand. Ralphie takes that. No way. Oh, maybe. Probably. So Probably. Ace, Deuce, Parry wins. Everyone's basically in it. From the from from seven to one, everyone's kind of still in it. But Vanessa's kind of got some work now to do. Jungle Man obviously has played very few tournaments, um, it, but he said, "I'm the favorite here." Did uh, he say that? Yeah, I mean, he has, as a lot of these guys do, a big ego, and maybe this is his time to prove it. Before poker, I was a student at college. I was a computer science student. I don't know, I was just a regular guy. When I first started out, I actually was not very good. I, I lost like a few thousand dollars, but eventually I moved to playing online uh, and I read books and eventually started watching videos. From there, I just like grinded upwards. I remember once in 2011 winning 650,000, something like that off uh, Patrick Antonius. That was my biggest win from a session. Anyways, for, as far as titles go, hoping I could start with that for the Premier League. I'm flattered that I was picked to uh, play in the Premier League. The amount of money you can win is exciting, of course. You know, to win it uh, actually is also um, alluring. Although honestly, it wouldn't mean that much in terms of like validating myself. I feel like I've already validated my skill at this game. It would only mean something in terms of uh, resume. We return to Vienna after the break as Group B continues to battle it out for points on the league table. 
welcome back to Premier League Poker 5 here in Vienna. Our Premier League players are all battling it out for points in this league format in a bid to progress through to that final table. Let's go back over to your commentary team. Tom Dwan, Phil Ock, has actually played pretty good this first level. He's in fifth place, hasn't lost many chips. It's been a solid level for I'm the I'm so Donkey. impressed. Only nine thousand. Yeah, he's doing good. <laughs> he's a favorite. To, he's probably... I'll tell you this, if he could just <laughs> miss 63 hands, he'd be a favorite to come in. He wouldn't come in last. Somebody will be out before that. I mean, I, you know, that I, what I think is, is, is quite amusing is that having obviously seen Tom Dwan play this format several times, and, um, you know, you always think to yourself, if there's one thing that you would change about the way he approaches this sit-and-go, it's just that he shouldn't dump his stack, half his stack off in the first level when the blinds are low. This is perfect for him. Right. I mean, you know yes, I mean? He's defending against his only leak. <laughs> exactly. Which is playing too many hands early on because he knows he has million dollar pots to deal with somewhere exactly. else in the world. I mean, uh, you know, Dwan may just take a plane One trip four. or a helicopter ride every league match from now on for the first three levels. Heads up. Ace, Jack, seven. Let's see, knight. So this is the well, nut well, foot. This well, is he's raises from the button, the jungle man. Yeah, Seaver. Wow, Seaver has some monster hand. Not as strong now, though. And remember, these kind of flops that come with all these overcards, when you raise and, and the guy calls, sometimes psychologically you're anchored with, I'm losing. So if you don't connect, you see how good he is? He just doesn't. There's just too many combinations of. He has nothing. The guy called the flop. People sometimes think, I'll shut down on the turn if he calls too. But the first bet can sometimes give you enough of it. Super focused, super intense. <laughs> All I know is when you forgot your roots, and I think it's gonna cost you. It already has cost me. Yeah, I do feel bad for Vanessa self. She can hear her voice is gone. She she put in she I've just been talking with her. She's been in the box for the group A and that just uh we petered her out. I think I asked her too many questions, Phil. Maybe, I don't know, but there was some exciting hands and so there was some Maybe. There was a lot to talk about. She did. I, I could we could say it's your fault because you made her yell and scream. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to watch that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poker's so much fun. <laughs> she did say several times, forgive me, Phil, but I have to yell right now. <laughs> <laughs> he's not allowed to check raise me twice, she's right? Look at this. These are the fact that he's checking raise me once, I mean, he's not allowed to do it again. Real hand versus real hand. I assume he's not. We should make a side bet on how Dwan playing more hand than any one of us for this hit. I like this check really behind. It's total pot control maneuvering. And he'll probably just check probably. again. And I love the way some of the craziest players and most aggressive players in the world have managed to keep being aggressive, Phil, without risking too many chips, right? Yep. yep. Wow, he's checked it twice now. I would Seaver. check the turn two. And I would check the river. He'll be betting the river, surely. I'm not ready betting for my the river. speech after he checks here to say how I had a new plan to not get checked. Because I feel like you're getting called with only hands that really can beat you. But I never listen to my own advice. What's a hand that would call? See, I don't like this. You can get bluffed off a hand, and you can't get called by it. Who's, who's going to call with ace-8? Are you calling with ace-8? I would just fold. I mean, I would just jag it. Pull back and check this. I, I think it's just he, he might know, by the way. Sometimes, sometimes I know I can't lose the pot, and I don't want, but I bet just to, sh I don't want to show the hand. Like, if he doesn't bet there, he has to show everyone, hey, look, I had uh, the top pair and I checked it. You know what I'm saying? So he's defending against that. That's a play. I yeah, and, and just kind of showing this guy that, you know, you're not going to give him, you're going to give him a couple free cards. They're not all going to be free. Yep. I love that Duan is just, his, he's playing just so stable and predictable. It's, it's very it's rare cool. to see <laughs> Tom Duan not get involved in any pots, you know? I mean, oh, it's, I, it's the perfect partnership, Duan and the donkey. Yeah. You know, he should send the donkey ahead. For the first 42 <laughs> hands. <laughs> just to, the first three uh, levels. And, and it, also yeah. in the cash games, you know, yeah. send the donkey ahead for the first Great. five, six Thank hours. Right. You know, while, while everyone all while everyone's <laughs> getting steamed up. Lock and up the, the seat, establish an image, and then Duan can come in. <laughs> You know, the donkey doesn't uh, doesn't like flying on the plane. The donkey doesn't like first class. The donkey doesn't like Asian food. By the way, I like raising better than calling, but I don't mind just folding, you know? 
Well, Selbst is under, I mean, she's under so much pressure right now, and, and the Evgeny has to know it, that, I mean, if he was to re-raise here, no matter what he has, she has to put her whole stack in and risk going out. Yeah, but in his mind, he's just visualizing that she has a hand. Because she would be and so crazy. By the way, crazy. he doesn't have a hand. Ace nine, I would right. rather have nine six okay. of clubs than ace nine offsuit. Do you know what I'm saying? Can't just steal that blind all day. I mean, it's not even fair. No. I finally get positioned on like the person you want to position on, and then he's not even here. So it's really just like dead him. blinds. Like just have my blinds here. Just take them. Just take them. I can't have that. No. How happened and how buzzing is the Montecino exactly. Casino on a on a late what late night? Yep. It's so nice being in Vienna, Austria. I haven't been here in over ten years. It's a beautiful town. I don't like this game. So this year they don't have a commentary. Uh, what's it called? A green room. Uh, in a, many of these things, when you're watching at home, the friends of the players are in another room, watching it happen in real time. And for this match, the only two people in real time are Jesse and myself watching this. You're saying the green room's the box. No, and really no in the olden days, they had the box plus the green room, True. remember? But there is a blog. Um, yeah, the blog comes out. On the breaks, they will look, and about, you know, a lot of the hands are shown. Half, something like half. Antonius has three bet the Wilanowski open, and He's got a he's got a decision here. You know, Patrick looks like a guy who wouldn't mess with you, but he is messing with him. So I like this call. It's he, so if I was calling there, I would feel like I'm half set my in, half protecting my hand, half wanting to see the flop to win more money, but half not sure. Is that a race? But I'm never. Uh, did he accidentally re-raise? She pushed back. Uh, he's put in 36, and it was 26. Patrick made it 26. 10 to 26, so, so 16. So if he made it more than eight, it's over half a raise. Yep. I think he put in, so they're ruling it a min raise? Yep. All in. That, that opened the door for the all in. Wow. It was, uh, cause he, it, wow. you could tell Wolanowski wasn't super comfortable. Let's and say, Patrick just saw it all, right? Yeah. This is a fun spot. And he doesn't think Wolanowski's gonna be leveling him with like aces or kings doing the half fake, whatever. Wolanowski knows what Patrick's just done, right? No, I think he's thinking, do I want to race against ace, queen, ace, king, or wait. He just said this is a fun spot. Kings? He knows what Patrick's done, but I mean, Patrick would do it with all his hands. Every hand he has, right? But he also re-raised pre-flop. I don't... It's a fold, isn't it? A call. Oh, He's wow. called! He calls. He's yeah, called! Okay, How gutsy is it? Slow down, please. I mean... Wow. I think I Let's go. I mean... How is that for a statement? No matter what happens, Phil. Wow. How is how is that for a statement by Ben Wilanowski? What was the statement that he said? What he did said, he say? He said, I'm gonna go with my gut. Wow, look at that flop. Whee! I'm not gonna be pushed around. <laughs> now ten of hearts. I think I have a space. That's it. Ouch. Uh does he come? Ouch! Super ouch. Tell the fans about that play. Did you feel lucky? Uh, I don't feel anything. Sorry. No, no feeling. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, Patrick Antonius has taken the chip lead. I always liked uh, card games, but poker is something a little bit different where you can win without having any hands. You can, you can find your ways to buy some pots. And it's a lot of adrenaline, a lot of excitement when you play. It's, it gives you a lot, of, a lot of kind of different kind of emotions. 
my reputation <laughs> as other people. <laughs> I came to play good poker. I'm gonna try to give myself a chance to win. I gotta prove that I belong here, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> this year's lineup it looks very tough. At least uh, my table, there's a lot of uh, young talent. I feel like I'm the oldest one on the table. Looks like uh, I'm always facing younger opponents. And so it looks, looks uh, very challenging for me. Will Anofsky's sitting there stunned because he knows, like, I don't want to say that's his Premier League, but Luke Schwartz is, is, is moping around like he just, you know, lost his lunch. I mean, Will Anofsky, the bagel, disastrous. Yeah. And there, Tom Dwan standing has just improved. Oh, Tom <laughs> Dwan's played great. I mean, I mean, Tom But what a weird hand. That's just such a, like, on a weird little wrinkle from trying to call. And then he did the right thing. The patient was a success. The operation success patient died. He was like, okay, so let me get it. So you don't you don't think that Wilanowski has made a, a real strong shout out to this entire field? He mistakenly got Max EV out of the hand and then died. <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's amazing. What a what a hand. And what about Antonius now? I mean, how strong is he? He's just looking like well, like the guy he he looks like he always does. But look at what happened. I mean, I I put it all in once with. You know, the butterfly it, effect. It's the butterfly I, effect. You win one hand and then... In fact, I mean, it really is morphic resonance, isn't it? I'm, you know, for you people at home, look up morphic resonance. It's a very interesting concept and it's... It was in play. Yeah, it's true. I folded like the sixth, fourth hand on that board. Did you hear Jungle Man? What did he say? He just told Scott Seaver he folded the sixth Can you worst stop hand. At the <laughs> That's the way he thinks, Phil. That's how that guy thinks. <laughs> See, I'll, I'll say I folded like the 19th best hand, but I'm just guessing where he knows the ranking. Oh, no, it was the yeah. sixth worst. Believe yeah. me. <laughs> so you folded a gut shot? No. Four or five is the third. I wouldn't have folded a gut shot. At least the third person. I, I rate gut shots better than. Oh, okay. It's an absolute value. <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't just in real value. It was an absolute value. It was the third worst in EV value. That was. That's how strong he is. Yep. But, you know, so. 13. Like, we have to look. When you're asking, like, how many levels a guy can be over another level, you have to ask, how many of these players would have been able That's to sort out what Wolanowski sorted out? That even though he made the mistake, that he's only calling there if he thinks he's winning. If he thinks it's against Jax, he's folding. You know what I'm saying? He, he was trying to take a flop and look at a... He was trying to take a flip and look at a flop, but then... He was only, right, he Neither. intended to call, but now at that stage that he made the mistake, he realized that Antonius' oh, range was still really wide. Yeah, Correctly. not wide like enough. One time. Wide enough. So this is top set. <laughs> it is, and there's a side pot between Seaver and Timoshenko. I got it, I got it. How is that all? I got, I got some draws. That's pretty good. <laughs> That's pretty good. Got it. He needs an eight or a nine of spades. By the way, it does feel like Seaver's going to win more than 92% of the time from here, but. Yep. He needs a, a high spade would be preferable. All right. Good luck, everyone. That's no good. It's fun. See you Wednesday, I guess. Well, Will Olofsky played off. great. I, I actually was really impressed with the way he handled that, that little Yay. teeny peg. He, <laughs> He got the max, but didn't, you know? And he sat there and thought about it and uh, did what he had to do. Seven players left, and Antonius, who, who just wins, doesn't he? Just wins. Yeah, that's, that's true. And uh, Tom is, he, he's but he's still pretty stable, 300. He has 285. We've lost Ben first off of our table here. Has fatigue been a factor at all for you? Um, I think it's made my decision-making process a little bit slower. Uh, I don't think it's made it too much worse. I 
there was a couple of spots where I thought about three betting and decided against it, but my general plan was to come in and play a little bit tight anyways, and uh, I think for the most part I came to good decisions at every point in the hands I play. We are down to seven, and Tom Dwan still hasn't taken his seat. Join us after the break as this Premier League match continues. Welcome back. It's the bagel for the global qualifier, Benjamin Wilanowski. That's zero points, and we have seven left at the table. There's Tom Dwan, and he's already scored his first Premier League point. So he's already made money in the Premier League. Phil Locke. Uh, he owes it all to the donkey. And you have to say that in a really real fashion, because with Tom Dwan's style... Um, this game would have been so much different. I mean, the butterfly effect, the actual winner is going to be changed because he's not here. You know, whoever wins this, statistically, uh, you know what I'm saying? Well, I, I'd say he is, he is here. He's just having a prop bet right now <laughs> right. that he can't fold the first 42 hands because <laughs> right. he's never done it before. Yep. <laughs> Eight Vanessa's is raised, and Seaver, he's just called. Yeah, and I love that play with ace-jack. Ace-jack is a strong hand, but when you raise for value and you get re-raised, it just shrinks. Because if you're getting bluffed, you feel sick, you don't want to call, and if they have a better hand, they just have a better hand. And from hearing Vanessa talk during group, the group A heat, she would expect Scott Seaver to bet, really, after she checked the, the flop, she would expect him to bet on the turn with almost anything. Um, so my guess is she'll well, have to Well, it's funny, because I think Vanessa, I mean, she's, she's got a kind of a hand, you know? She's, but it's not like, these are weird spots where you have the pair and a gutter ball. And, it's his check. Now she's going to win it. Huh. He knew to shut down. Yeah, you, you do I guess she like has to call for one bet, right? Because he can have the whole world, and she actually has something. So, And she has outs if she's wrong, if he had a king-queen or something. Anyways, you don't really want to turn ace-jack into a bluff there. It has some showdown value. Four, four. Oh, another pair of fours. We are seeing some odd symmetries in this group B. A lot of pressure off Vanessa Selp now that uh, Ben Wilanowski has gotten knocked out. Maybe not all the pressure off, but certainly a lot of it. And is she going to start getting a little fed up with Jungle Man re-raising her all the time? I don't know, but this is uh, a spot where it just hurts because I would fold the fours. I don't know. You don't feel a four bet coming on? She's hoping she's right, and if she shoves it. What is her stack? Maybe it's small enough. If her stack is small enough. She's got 197 back. I would just fold. Around. She could make it maybe 50 and still fold? No, I'd just fold here, whatever. I, you never raise, if you raise here, you're trying to get it all in, but. Okay, 25, eight, she's getting eight to one on that 25. Maybe, I don't know. She decided to peel off the flop and has missed. This is the classic problem with these small pairs. You can be ahead and just feel gross on a flop. Seven check. Even though she's ahead, he still has a lot of, you know, he's 43%. I think Jungle will take a free card here again. But, of course, I don't earn like Jungle, so he's probably going to bet. I guess he's. He, this is a value bet blocker bet something. I don't know what it is. I mean, there's a certain kind of person, Phil, you would almost think they like always have ace king there, but I guess jungle is not one of those guys. He could also have a lot of hands like probably two nines, two tens, and ace ten, and that kind of Coming. stuff. Uh, let's put it this way. It's not. I'm not going to put it past jungle for him to. How's he doing? He's second in chips. It's six. It's basically Antonius running shop with that big hand, Jungle Man, and then Tom Tuan looking like he might outlast 
Vanessa. <laughs> it really does. There has always been this idea about how, how long, how would a box do? How would the cardboard box do in the World Series? How would the cardboard box do in the Premier League? Yeah, how long? To, yeah. Um, I, I remember. Are they actually, when they deal the cards, do they actually give Tom Dwan a hand and then kill it? Or are they just dealing them out? I, I think I okay. think they give him cards. Okay. You need I, to see his cards. I want to see his cards. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. I knew you were going to say that, Phil. <laughs> no, I'm not asking for the cards to be shown to the public as if it's an interesting thing or whatever, but for my own, like, little wrinkles. You need to see them. I just want to point out to the audience when he has aces or something like I know, that. I you know. know. You need to see them. <laughs> okay, let the dealer know that the cards are supposed to go over Tom Bond's things and they're supposed to be registered because it's poker. We, you know, uh, he's entitled to those hands and I want to play fantasy poker. Like, what if he has ace kings and somebody has aces? It'll be like, we'll be like, wow, look at that. He's a genius for not being here. Well, two levels are finished, Phil Locke. Looking at the, the those numbers there, obviously, Dwan, 0-0, zero, zero, he hasn't played ahead. But for Elke, are you surprised that he's the tightest player at the table by a long way? No, uh, I'm not. And the reason why is he probably subscribes to a theory which I subscribe to, which is absolute. You want to play vacuum tight for the first 63 hands, I believe. When you come into a pot, you come in with a race. But putting chips into the pot, you're supposed to be a little reluctant. So three and 6,000. This is kind of where it could start to hurt the donkey style. Eight, four. And start to really impact One, four. his ability. Now, 9,000 around. Uh, now the donkey's playing too tight. <laughs> now the donkey has, is suddenly playing too tight. But Wow, so they're really yes, finishing. 15, I thought they were only doing two rounds. They're doing more. They're going into round level three now, huh? The players have. Yeah, this have, is now going to cost. Yeah, let's see. And this is going to make it so much more dramatic. Uh, because the people are trying to get points, and there's Tom Dwan just getting his points. Right. You know? And, it's, it, you know, it's, 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 there, there's actually a, a statement to be made here, which is that everyone seems to agree that folding for the first 42 hands is fine but now it's level different. three it's different yeah now you have to start getting involved the blinds are real you have to stay ahead of the curve and i'd like to predict that 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 uh tom duan and the donkey actually do well during the level three <laughs> right well it's Seven let's seconds. see how many how many people are out right now Two people are out. One player out. One player out. One on kind of not really life support, but lowish, which is obviously Vanessa. Okay, no one likes that fourth diamond. And Timoshenko's definitely got enough to, to call a small bet. Uh, can he call a big bet? And should Jungleman make one? The funny thing is, if Timoshenko had like a 10 of diamonds, it's effectively the same as a queen or two pair, these sort of things, because Jungle Man isn't betting uh, like six of diamonds. He's betting a queen, king, and ace of diamonds. So he's asking himself, does my opponent have one of those three cards? And he decided he did. It felt like a risky bet from Jungle Man, but he made it. He was right. He's good. Yep. Oh, yeah. One forward. Two forward. Four forward. Five forward. You know, people think, oh, it's six handed or whatever, eight seven, you gotta play. But, you know, you have time to kind of wait for hands, even. I, I don't mind that a seven fold at all. I do that stuff sometimes. I like the king seven raise. I like the queen seven defend. These are, I think, more standard plays because you're towards the end of the action. There's there's such an interesting sort of philosophical question that Wilanowski has to ask himself about his play versus the donkeys. Wow. You know what I'm saying. He's wishing he arrived tomorrow. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Six 
Antonius checked wow. the flop and Seaver value bet his air on the turn and, and, and got, got there. there. Right. And I mean, Antonius had him exactly where he wanted him. And yep. now the tables have turned. And of course, Antonius just flats because, you know, it's king with no kicker. It's winning a lot. But if you raise your yeah, it's losing to all the hands that can call a raise. Let's put it that way. So you really don't want to raise. It, it's really going to be interesting now to see how Antonius deals with the river bet. You know, we saw a hand earlier against Selbst where Seaver shut down on the river after bluffing the turn, right? And Antonius obviously saw that hand. Yep, good fold, Patrick. Well, you, you know, it's reasonable that Seaver bet some kind of thing like a pair in a straight draw and got there or made two pair in the river and figured I'm betting for value. Up into third is Scott Seaver. When, when you do a play like you don't raise and you just flat, your opponent, I, this is why I don't mind flatting sometimes with the larger hands without a kicker because what, I mean, you you can you still have the door open to maybe steal the pot later when you find out wow top pair is no good but look I can rep this or rep that you have now like an extra little branch you can go to occasionally and most of the time you're just getting bets from a guy that is firing with no way to win you know that happens a lot. I mean I I'd, I'd like to predict with absolute certainty what Tom Dwan will say upon finding out that his stack was blinded an additional level. He won't those, care. He will actually like, be, uh, uh, okay. Whatever, yeah, <laughs> so indifferent, you know. <laughs> in his mind, he's thinking, well, even if I come in last place here, I can still do, I can still win the event, you know. Okay. There's three more heats, so. Seavers raised this from the cutoff spot. Tim Oshenko has flatted from the small blind. And wow, now it's a pair and a straight draw versus the better pair. I think it's going to go check from. Uh, it might go bet check, 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 check I bet guess. Check. These guys are they, they love to get the money in pre-flop and then just kind of play patsy. Well, they all love their post-flop games. This is. This is actually a value bet turn bluff because. And it's going to be a call, a trivial call. call. It's a value bet bluff, blocker, something. I don't know what the hell it was, but he knows he's beat when the guy calls. Oh, when check. What? Check, 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 bet call. Bet call, right. And Seaver, who has was talking a lot early, has now sort of just gotten down to his game, and he's been really making some moves, making some money, and playing a lot of pots, Phil. Yeah, I wish, like, Elki or somebody was seated to his left or right. I mean, right now, effectively, Elki is on his left, but it's on the other side of the table. Jungle Man isn't as talkative as Elki. I think, uh, I mean, Timoshenko, I think if Timoshenko or Elki were next to Siva, there'd be more chit-chat. And I think same with Vanessa, except Six she's point. losing, so she doesn't have the, the vibe to talk. You know what I'm saying? That's why it's kind of quiet, because the, the people that normally would chat it up a little bit are on the other side of the table. So Seaver's forced to just play. Yep. Jungle Man, 15. I like the King Jack call. It's a big hand, but it's like that classic thing if I raise. I'm only getting action from hands. I mean, Elkie's played so few hands, you, you have to raise the eyebrows when he calls, right? Right, you know he's got a hand, like ace, four, spades, pocket sevens, king jacket clubs. We'll see how Jungleman wants to do it. Is it check fold? It's check, check. Okay, so now Elke knows he's ahead. He's probably just going to check call. Like, if he bets there, even though he knows he's ahead, he's just too much, he's too vulnerable. And I think this will be check, because Jungle Man's Seven checking, check. thinking he's good. He would probably call a value bet thinking it might be a bluff. 
I think this bet will get called, actually. In a strange way, I just... Because Jungle doesn't put him on an eight, so he, and he doesn't put him on a flush. So it's like, is he really... He's only worried about the ace. He's not thinking jack, queen, jack, king, although it's real. And he's not really worried about an ace, because why didn't... You know, he's... I love what you That's said good. about Jungle Man them. earlier, Phil Lott, which is that, you know... I mean, he doesn't, just because he hasn't played this format a ton of times, I mean, he's a Hold'em player. He reads boards. He's, how did he, look how he did that. So after 52 hands, Jungleman has dropped back down to third place, and Scott Seaver is closing in on Patrick Antonius. At the other end of the board, Vanessa Selp still has a lot of work to do to get back in the mix. Patrick Antonius is looking strong in Group B's first league match. He's chip leader. This Premier League match continues after the break. Welcome back to Montesino in Vienna for Premier League Poker 5. Seven players are left in Heat B's first league match, but Tom Dwan is yet to take his seat as he missed his flight from Macau, and as a consequence, he is being blinded out. Let's give you a reminder of the format of this Premier League. Players are awarded points for where they finish in a match. It's 16 for a win, 11 for the runner-up, then six, four, three, two, and zero points for coming last. After four matches, each player's points will be added up, and the top three in each group are guaranteed a place in the final. Additionally, the players are also awarded $2,000 per point. It's an exciting concept, and we are guaranteed to see some exciting action. Jungleman's flopped the, the, the nuts. Um, he's, and it's a little bit disguised, isn't it? Because he's raised in kind of middle position and gotten flatted by Scott Seaver. Right, uh, and Seaver has a real hand. Daniel's like, how can I get value if I He's just hoping that his opponent has a hand. And luckily, Seaver has something of a hand. The, the default play here, obviously, is to call, which Seaver has done. I guess it gets a little interesting on the turn. Yeah, he hopes, he doesn't want to roll a 10 or a king off the board. Queen, there's this, now the flush has appeared, and he has no draw to a flush, and all he has is a straight draw with now the third pair, so. And I mean, Jungle Man's not exactly you know, getting all the all the hands that uh, that are calling him, he's not beating all of them anymore. So this is a he's gonna bet for value, and I don't I I mean I think it's gonna be fold because how can I win? If it was a queen of clubs, we might get a call, but the flush in addition, it's just too much. Well, eighty-three thousand in the pot, and Jungle Man's bet sixty-two. It's it's a serious bet. And it means that if Seaver wants to do anything about this, he's going to have to invest even more serious money. Yep. He knows his opponent can have hands like King of Diamonds, Ten of Clubs. Or, you know, it's not unreasonable to think he could have. To, yeah, I think, uh, I, I don't know, I would still fold, though, because you don't want to be putting in 80 dimes on a draw or sit, whatever it is, 60. Remember, you only start with 300. You jiggle it up, fine. He's he thought Seaver. about it, yeah. but he let it go. Look at Seaver. He's like, he wants to know what he had so bad right now. <laughs> Jungle Man passes the wish test there. Jungle Man would have gotten, I mean, if a low card peels off, a low non-diamond or a king or a 10, Jungle Man's just going to really whack Seaver there. See, it's funny because Seaver thinks he's running unlucky that a Queen of Diamonds came, but it saved him. So sometimes, you know, when you have a flush and you don't get there, you think, oh, damn, but the other guy had the nut flush and you actually ran good by not getting it. And I like the way Antonius is handling his lead. He's just sort of protecting it. He's not doing anything fishy. It's just like straightforward tight, aggressive, waiting for hands, kind of. Yeah, he's got this 
I don't even I don't even think it's professional pride. It's just sort of this inability, Patrick Antonius, to ever misplay a hand in his mind. Yeah, he wants to play his best. And Timoshenko, you know, when it's been his button and his cutoff, there's always been a raise to him from either jungle man or Seaver. Every time. Right. And he should like this because he's got two super active people showing, you know, the world what they can do. And now he's he's able to just flat. I think he's, I would personally flat with that hand with position. Did he raise? I think he's three bet this again. He's, you know, and, and this has become quite a common theme for him. And And Vanessa, I mean, if there's anything for her to think about, it's that it's that it's a great spot for Timoshenko to make a light three bet. Could she make a light four bet? I would fold ace two, but if she's, I mean, what is what is her stack right now? She's got 180,000. I mean, it's 36. It's going to have to be all in. Yeah, if she raises, it's she's putting more than half your stack in anyways. And anytime you raise and put more than half your stack in, you're supposed to put it all in. It'll work. So she's, I mean, it'll yeah, work. It, it will definitely work here, but she's also like, you know, what's the math there? Uh, she's exposing herself to such downside if somebody that has the ace king. I just died a little on the side for folding that. I can't believe you did that. Whatever that was, I can't Does it matter what that was? No, that's why I said. <laughs> too much time in the box, she's tired because of her. I think the, the fear, the fear of giving too much equity to the donkey if Probably she gets called. Right? Yeah, um, there's a lot of <laughs> equity there. The donkey gets tons of equity. Yeah, if she, he just if goes she moves up. all the worst. Such a good spot. Perfect one. It's a it's a spot most people wouldn't have thought about. And Vanessa, it's uh, always been your problem. She she it saw it and she didn't pull the trigger. I, I would have played that 9-4 of hearts, even though it was early position. I'm just in the mood to play a hand right now. It's probably wrong. <laughs> it's under the gun. you got to fold that, but. OK. Yeah, Ganny. Uh, she does a great thing. <laughs> She's really uh, remonstrating. Remon she's demonstratively remonstrative. Dem demonstratively something. Remonstrative. Rem what's it? She's, demon she's right, demonstrative. Dem demonstratively remonstrating herself. Right? Remonstrating. <laughs> I don't know that I've heard the word remonstrating till today. I'm going to expand my vocabulary. Please. Uh, I'm going to venture a guess that it's not may not be pronounced like that. <laughs> oh, it's probably a word. I'm, my vocabulary's got a lot of holes to fill in. So this is uh, a bet for value, fold to a raise, hope the guy doesn't call bet. Exactly what it is. You're hoping he has king queen or king jack or king ten. You just, and uh, this is one of my weaknesses. I often don't bet there when I think it is a bet, you know? I think it's a good time because you're probably winning if the guy, you know? And if he calls, okay, so now you're probably losing. I mean, but look at this. It's a raise, knowing that it could be the you're probably winning. But how can you call a bet? Raise, fifty-two. You know, Phil. I mean, so many of these guys have checked back flops like that with hands like Timoshenko has after raising the flop. Yeah, just to try and and, and this is why you do it because if you don't, you're guys opening like yourself up to a guy that just knows what's going on. And by the way, if you get to check it twice now, oh, now they know that you're going to hold on, so they often don't <clears throat> go for it. Well, kudos to Patrick. He knew what was going on. And he took it one level deeper. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. instead of just folding, knowing that the guy, you know, like that time that was trick it value bet the, the eight or the nine, and I had kind of like uh, two a fours. worse hand, two fours, and I called. I can turn the fours into a, a check raise bluff sometimes there. Once I know, I don't know. You know, it's like that kind of thing. Same branch. But it's hard because the other guy can. Oh, here it is, Ace Queen. Uh, Antonius is just—he's he's really good. Yep. he's really good. And yet, obviously, Wilanowski will be somewhere um, thinking about what could have been. Yeah. Oh, 
I want a three bet, but I feel a four bet coming from Tom. <laughs> <laughs> now we're gonna see some fireworks. I think Vanessa should go all in here, uh, which I would do. I don't know if it's right, but she's flatting. To a raise and a call. Okay, I, the flatting's fine here too. Uh oh. Now we're gonna. Now Antonio's for sure is gonna raise. Well, when you look at the stacks out there, he's got so many. If he's wrong, if some guy's aces, it's not like he loses the match, you know? Right. He's got because he's got so many chips. He absolutely has to. to this knocks out all the pocket sevens and lower. Does, does this look like a squeeze to anyone such that they might get a little frisky here? I don't know, but sixes is, if sixes just knew how many cards were out. But what about ace queen? I mean, how? I think ace queen folded, didn't he? Yeah. No, no, ace queen is Scott Seaver. Oh. He, was the, uh, he was the original razor from under the gun. Okay. Made it 16. There's been three calls. And Antonius from the small blind has re-raised to 62. And, you know, Seaver's quite wide-eyed there. You don't pick up anything from looking at the fin. I mean, right. he's just, he's so cold. I'm I'm going to say that if Seaver does something sick and puts a lot of chips in, that it's not a bad play, even though I don't, I don't think I would, I think I would probably just, what, what I think it's wrong to just snap fold. And that's what I often do here. Uh, at least he okay. But you like that's the, what I would do. Like I I like the fold, but I can I'm never gonna blame a guy for <clears throat> not believing him. The you know self sand obviously not as good as the ace queen, but difference is she doesn't have as many chips. Um, yeah, she can only go all in now. It's I think this is and there's super nobody behind her. Part. Yeah, but she's that's the thing. The things arguing for call is nobody's behind me. But in the end, it is just king high. <laughs> you kind of feel like... Funny you know, thing is, I would be out. Like, if I had king-queen there, I might have just jammed it. I probably had the best hand. I probably had the best hand, I said. Here he is, uh, his stats. Total aggression, average steal attempts, average three bet percentage, yeah. quite high. It is high. Uh, higher than Sam Trickett's percentage in, in Group A, which was the highest out of all players in Group it's A. It's weird. Those numbers are higher than what it felt like as I was watching it. So, you know, he did his aggression sneakily, too. I would say worse than the the three I'm bet really percentage, Phil. Um, how often a player three bets out of hands where they have the option of three betting? So that would be where it's just one bet to them. Right, Two bets. Right, right, Sorry, yeah. you know what I mean. Yep. yep. It's not. It's not a percentage of all hands. I like flatting with the fours here. You're gonna have to listen to uh, Jesse and Phil Lott. Just oh my God, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. Wow, we, we, I feel we owe it to Phil. That's what you're subjecting. Right. That was just rude. It's rude of all. You're subjecting the audience to Phil's poker analysis right now. Oh, she just said, I'm sorry I can't talk. It's terrible. Now the people at home have to listen to me. <laughs> She's right. I don't have a lot to offer. I'm sorry, guys. I just, I'm tired. You've always got a lot to offer. It's but I'm, I'm tired right now, so I'm not on my A game. I, I mean, to be honest, I think this is, this is some of the most you know, fascinating pure poker to watch. Oh, my God. I love, I love sitting in here. You're talking about, like... I mean, how big are the poker brains combined at this table? You know, and it shows how silly I am. I, I kind of had in my mind that Jungle Man and Antonius would be the two guys who would be sort of left behind uh, because they don't thrive in this format. Like that matters. And the, yeah. Do you think Dan has thrown more or fewer cards off a poker table than all of us combined, including the dealer? This is a lot of, let's just do a lot in on how many cards he's thrown. That's way better. That's way better. Should we do a lot in how many cards Daniel Cates has thrown in his life? Uh, who wants to be the lot in? 
Come I'll be Laden. So I'll be Laden because I've experienced playing with Dan. Did you, right. you do? Yeah, I missed Laden. Nice, nice. How many chips are you for? No cart. <laughs> chips with chips with how many chairs? <laughs> How's he knocked down. How many items beginning with the letter C? Has he thrown? I guess we're not doing this, huh? We have one hand to do a lot in, if you want. Yeah. I'll we'll wait till next level. I think. I'm quite interested in this. Next level. <laughs> what do you think, Phil? Make a market. <laughs> uh, for the number of cards After Daniel break. Cates has tossed off the table, uh, and, break and then I would have, I would have thought very low. But when they're making those comments, it must be like 50 or something or 30. No, I'll, I'll go with 20. But he 21. hasn't. He hasn't played as much live poker as any of the rest of them, being mostly an internet player. I'm going to go with 14. I'm changing my number. 14 <laughs> is the number of. It's probably really in real life. It's probably like six. That's why he's laughing, thinking. <laughs> this hand's still going now. Look at what it goes. Okay, so eights. This is a. I'm in a bet, and if I get raised, I'll know where I'm at. You've got to see that, Patrick. Continue the bet. You forgot a continuation bet. Yeah, I'm bad at. Oh my god. <laughs> My nose started running, so I knew you were bluffing. Only, like only one. I'm a very oh, a good check. disciplined guy. Oh. I've only it's broken like... one. I've only broken the hard drive. Tell, tell me about the time you smashed the hard drive on your laptop. <laughs> I was playing $25.50, cent, and I lost like a few hundred dollars. No, no, come on, seriously. I'm serious. They've played three levels, Phil, and I mean, Dwan the story. holding steady at 246. Yeah, he's, he's starting to look like a contender. You know? <laughs> But uh, do you think it's fair dues that Antonius and Jungleman are the leaders? Uh, sure. Uh, why not? I mean, I honestly think any of them can uh, be playing. And, playing and, and the donkey, it's has not been a disastrous strategy. No. Join us after the break to find out if Patrick Antonius can keep his lead as internet sensation Tom Dwan joins the table. Welcome back to Premier League Poker 5 at Montesino. Group B is playing their first league match, but up till now, Tom Dwan has been absent. The internet sensation has now arrived and is ready to take his seat. So Jesse, you're not gonna believe it. Tom Dwan has arrived. He's downstairs having a cup of coffee. Just off the <laughs> plane from Hong Kong. He looks fresh as a daisy. Yeah, and uh, and given that he hasn't misplayed a hand so far, maybe he'll come <laughs> in and just punish them all. He's out, one per, he's outla outlasted one, and one person has got less chips than him. He's in decent. He's doing better than I've seen him do in other tournaments. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so one player out, seven players left in Group B. Now Tom Dwan into the fray. Yep. I've managed to catch up with Tom before we start playing, which is amazing, uh, because you've actually come in a little late. Where have you been? Uh, I was in Hong Kong. I missed my flight. It was kind of a mess and uh, whatever, now I'm here. We've seen you in the Premier League before, you know this structure, what makes the Premier League so exciting to come and play? Uh, I'm just going to go out there and try to get all the chips and then it'll be exciting if I do. <laughs> Is there anything about the structure itself, being able to play in you know, the different heats and matching up in different combinations? Uh, it's still a tournament so there's obviously a lot of variance in who's going to win. It matters, you know, who gets luckiest a lot. But it does matter a little less than most tournaments with this format because you do have, you know, four tries at it and then the points carry over. It's still not like you're playing thousands and thousands of hands online or something, but you get in probably a few hundred. It's more than, you know, a normal sit and go structure. All right, well, we're looking forward to seeing you play. Thank you. Thanks. What is this? You can have this gift. Lines now five and ten. Phil, something about the magic of Tom Dwan. You know, even though these other players in the Heat, they were kind of a little grumbly. You know, when's Dwan gonna get here? This and that. They love having him. They do. He talks. He's chatty. He's smart. He. Can, you know, it's, it's gonna be one and, a day. And he is. He's such a special guy. Of you talk about all the the top players in the world. There's, there's them, and then there's Tom Dwan, the man of mystery, the ultimate yep. D-Gen, the guy yeah. who will play anyone. <laughs> He'll, the guy who will be in the wrong country. <laughs> he comes in, hasn't played a hand, starts with the needle. Now we know how the donkey would have played this hand. Yeah. <laughs> and Dwan not wasting any time. And he shouldn't. I mean, that's an opening hand every day of the week. 
So he, he's come back with just over 25 big blinds or just over 24, and Patrick Antoni is gonna take him to the test. It, of course, we would have loved to see what, what would have happened if Patrick decided to just ship there, you know? <laughs> there we go. Now, it's funny, because, oh, this is, this is interesting now. We've got, when you're, I mean, Jack, the Jack-9, Antonius is thinking, well, I've got over cards, because you kind of heads up, sometimes fade away the top card from your mind to kind of give the hand strength thing. So he's thinking it. It's a I, big flop for yeah. the big blind. He's thinking any Jack-9 or 10 is probably good. <laughs> But he, he bets to find out if his opponent has a king out of the gate. Now, if he gets action, he's going to shut down. I mean. And there is this interesting relationship, which is that even though this is Antonius's and Duan's first hand ever played together they in the Premier just, League. Yeah, they've played like six months together playing 2,000, 4,000, no limit. And, and millions of hands online. Millions of hands online. So the, the Dirt Challenge, that's right. This was the original Dirt Challenge, these two guys. So they're just picking up from there. And I think... For many people, this would be a standard call, but for Tom Dwan, it's a raise. The best part is like they're both. Tom has to be thinking, "Hey, I just spent like a day getting here. I wonder if I'm going bust on the first hand, you know?" And he will embrace that sort of thinking. If he had, if if his opponent had seven eight and he feels like he has to go broke, he will do it without any. <laughs> Look at this. And you know, I wonder how how over is this hand? I mean, you know, in Antonius's mind. Uh, does Dwan have a hand that he'll be willing to be pushed off still at this stage? I, I, no, he's going to fold this. This is just like, it's, he's so good. Now Scott's going to get in the talking zone. It's going to be a talking zone. Show him the four of clubs right there. Show him the four <laughs> of clubs. It only took one hand back yeah. over a starting stack. I don't show hands anymore. I'm used to Macau. You just oh, yeah. slide your cards in and they get grabbed by someone. 64 hands played perfect. <laughs> and just like that, he get the pot big enough. he notches <laughs> up a little. <laughs> no points lost. And by the way, I like the way Patrick played that. I, I like the call. I like betting out, and I like folding because if you just check and the guy bets, now you don't know where you're at at all when you call. I really think that's yeah. only, I really truly think that's only a matter of time. By the way, like. Big, big game. Small. Elke, you know, he, um, he obviously didn't get many hands and didn't play many hands in the first three levels, but we know that'll change. Yep. A little piece out there? Yeah, yeah. Of course. Have Peter and Shadow been out there too? Yeah, they came back. Three raised, 22. This is for sure going to be a, a, a raise by Tom Dwan. But it, I, he, you can't blame the guy if he flats as well. I often flat with ace queen and sometimes flat with ace king. But I think he's thinking I've got to get rushed. I got to get going. Well, there's also a great dynamic, isn't there? That you know they didn't see the last hand, which he was Tom Dwan's he first it. hand, and he, and he right. raised. Now he's yep. re-raised again. It looks like to all these players like he might just be getting busy. I mean, Selbst is. She was halfway to the cold four bet shot. I did it with the ten jacket. Sometimes it's right, yeah, but when it goes when it goes raise raise, it's hard. Yeah. If it goes raise, it's on different. Me. Can't go all in on this. I call. <laughs> oh, yeah. I cannot call in on him. I can go all in on you. How the two of them been doing? Her voice is gone, Vanessa Self, and a shame because she's a, she loves talking. She's yep. a great talker. She yep. had that weapon I'm taken away from her. They both I won a lot of big blinds and lost a lot of money. <laughs> so now Tom Dwan is up to 344. <laughs> Just takes the hand. He's averaging, he's, he's averaging climbing one place per hand. He'll be chip leader by, by the four hands according halfway to through this level. Yeah. 19 hours a day, that's a lot. Fair enough, but you know what I mean. 4 4 Vanessa, with only 15 big blinds, is, I, I don't know if she's in push-shove mode. Right, the question is, is do you open and 
Do you open shove? Do you open raise and then fold if you get raise? And I, what would I do? Let's see. 15. Or or open to call it off. You're gonna make it 50 if somebody makes it. I try not. I try not to. <laughs> This is probably... Uh, it's so funny watching her try to talk with no voice. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, you know, it's tough being a poker player that can't talk. She's it's also a It's a weird lawyer. stack, you know? It's a weird stack. You, that's fine play, too, because it's... Yeah. It's weird. A few if her stack more. was more, she has to raise. If it's less, she's going all in. And with that kind of, you know, 156 and the blinds are 510, it's 15. A very wow. disciplined Wow, look at that. Is. Vanessa being instantly rewarded by Seaver waking up with Ace King. Seaver and Jungleman have developed sort of this uh, relationship in the early going right. where Seaver teases Jungleman and Jungleman just takes it. And this is a small blind, big blind. I think they're, this is fine, you know. It's call, raise, call. That okay. flop is both. That, that hits everyone. But you know, Jungle Man knows that it. Wow, and Seaver's check behind. That's going to prevent, I think, either player from bro going broke. At Red, this stage. It, it will be either check, bet, or bet, call, or. I think you just got to call here. You're only losing, really, essentially, to a queen. And, when the second queen arrives, remember the chance your opponent has that queen to start goes down, actually. If that makes any sense. It's just harder for him to have the queen. It's really a bet on the on the large side here. Uh, 50,000, now this pot 170,000. Both of them have only, they've got about the same stacks, only got a few back. That's funny, because now Jungle Man is thinking, well, I beat any, like, you know, like if my opponent had ace, four spades, I've now passed that hand, etc. But he'll, my guess is he's gonna just check give up. Only because that's what I would do, I, but I don't I don't know how Jungle thinks, you know. I mean, it's a weird way for Scott Seaver to play the ace king, Yeah, he's it? super under-repping the hand, and uh, when you do that, you're gonna have to make scarier, less, less information-rich calls, because the person's more likely to aggress against you if you never expose the power of your hand, you know? And uh, this is just a straight value. He's like, okay, my opponent doesn't have a queen, but what if he puts me on like ace, deuce of spades? Maybe he has something he can call. But Jungle Man knows better, and just, that's the end of the hand. Snap mucked, big bet, Scott Seaver up to nearly half a million. And round about the chip lead. I, I just want to say, it's good to have Tom Dwan in town, and I'm glad that he's got a little bit of chips because I want to see him, I don't know, I want to see his magic, you know? I haven't seen him play in a while. I couldn't agree with you no, no, more, Phil. Even though I'm not saying he's better than the rest, I'm just saying I want to see his magic. He's got the magic. I mean, that, that, that's it, you know? There's uh, screaming. <laughs> there's great poker players, and there's no, oh, there's the combination of poker and the TV it. stars. And Tom Dwan is sort of uh, yeah, yeah. It was he's just in, he's just in a different a different cash, world. Cash game, the oh, because there was another time that he like called the clock or something on Ruble in. Uh... Antonius is trying. <laughs> Antonius is like, okay, there's a lot of talking. I have a real uh, hand. Do I want to call? European World Series. Oh, really? I think he's gonna call yeah, because it's a real good hand with value. They have a lot but of I'm teams. always wrong with Antonius. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the second time he's. Uh, but you know, he's gonna fold if he gets re-raised. I think unless the blind. stack is small. Well, What's Vanessa's really only got blind. 15 big blinds, so I mean, he had to kind of decide what what he was gonna do if if he re-raises and she shoves. Wow. Okay, so now we're in a weird spot with the eights. You can fold this or go all in. That's super aggressive. That's yep. super aggressive. He's going to get nines and tens, sometimes jacks to fold, right? I mean, he, he basically hasn't played a hand. And you were just saying you wanted to talk about Elkie, the invisible Elkie. Look at the first move he's made. A very light, cold four bet, nearly a shove. He picked up on the spot. Yep. Everybody's going to know why I had so see. It's funny because he's he's really got the idea of how important it is to just just to hang in there and get the points. But then he made that play. I think that's fine play. I 
<laughs> I probably would have folded, actually. <laughs> but look at how good it is when you can get a guy that has EV Five, equal to you to just fold. It's huge. Those chips are not yours. And more than anybody, and I don't know if Elk has ever been in this position before, uh, he's got he's got credit at this table for a tight image. Yeah. When's the last time you could say that about LP? Uh, right. <laughs> you know. I just made a 5K. Oh, yeah? Hey, let's go from the cap. There's super satisfying. There's kind of an idea that uh, the guys aren't deep enough to to be sort of calling with small pairs and that kind of thing. Receiver thinks different from behind. No, I think this is a... And Are you guys talking about Stark? I mean, yeah. I'm calling with sevens and up, maybe even fours. I mean, yeah, I, the thing is you're putting in 23, you have... Four, they have 400. Blinds are five. Maybe it's ten. not a call. I would call though, really because the thing is, it so. well, a dangerous this, flop this for looks, everybody. Yeah, but jungle man. These flops are gross. If like Seaver, Seaver had he had jacks or something, this is just where you have to lose a bunch. And luckily, he has the under pair. So he doesn't have to lose that much. There is a certain level of intensity that Jungle Man brings to the proceedings that, you know, I mean, usually it's only reserved for, for heart surgeons and, you know, like uh, guys that, uh, uh, snipers perhaps. I mean, he's focused. In a cash game, when you have infinite stacks, sometimes if somebody makes a bet like that and I don't believe them, I'll raise them to get the cleanest information you can get during the hand. Because if they call or raise, I mean, you're obviously dead. And if you call here, the problem is, what if he keeps barreling? You don't know where you're at and whatever. Now he has a flush draw, it could be bad. It's Absolutely, I mean, Seaver, from the start of this hand, is playing a very fine line, isn't he? Right. And now the jungle man's checked. He's now, he's thinking I have any, any seven or a, maybe a diamond. I wonder, I, I mean, it's obviously time for Jungle Man to make a value bet, but I wonder if if Seaver thinks this is a line Jungle Man could be taking just with air here. It is, but it's going to be hard because Jungle Man might value bet a King Jack here because it's hard for his opponent to have an ace. Um, and from Jungle Man's point of view, what is he trying to get called by? I don't know. This is like... I bet I, I don't know. Is is he hoping that Seaver hit the king on the turn? Is he hoping that? Um, I play those hands kind of funny. I check hoping the guy might stab at a, va a value bet with a king or I something. Just fold eight four. Four. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> now Jungle knows that that's a a lie. How do you know? How do you know? <laughs> so un so unfortunate right there. Selfs. Yeah, 121. That's sir. So you think she's down to almost an open shoving stack in a sense? 45. If somebody raises, she's got to go all in her fold. And if she opens, I think. I don't know. I was. I think she can raise normal with her super big hands. Or PLO and 1 2 with a 700 button. Maybe answer. go all in with like the A6 and A10 kind of thing. No cap. So she, uh, she's quite right confident now. in her uh, abilities yeah. with this like size really stack. This, now she's for sure shipping here. Yeah. I mean. This is kind of automatic yeah. uh, given yeah. how often Scott Seaver's been opening under the gun, right? Yep. And that would be a snap. This is just a snap call race. Let's see. And a race for Vanessa Selp, huge. 12 bigs. <laughs> 12 bigs. <laughs> Got the T going there. It was it was eight hours in the box. That's what did her in yep. during group A's. Watching you, Phil. Doing some goofball stuff. Oh, that's not a good start. Turn and river to come. Or Selps is going to be on two points. These chairs By standing up, yeah. she's trying. 
I mean, from a TV standpoint, it's good because you get to film scenes of people leaving on tilt, but. <laughs> See you tonight. Yeah. Later. Two points for Selps on the other end of the coin. Scott Seaver starting to pile the chips on here. And, well, look, and now we're definitely going to see. Yeah, you were uh, humming around the words table captain. We're going to really see that now. He's got he's got position on Antonius and Jungle Man. He's going to abuse them if he can. Next time we see who takes down maximum points in Group B's first league match here in Vienna. Sorry, give me one second to think about how the hell this little tournament plays. This is the first time I've ever heard Tom Zahn be excited about the chance of holding. That's not a good start. A thousand at a time. Yep. Grinding it up. That's the way to do it.